Hi all, Holly Wed from Arara High School here, bringing you my next video on making maths fun. Now in this video, we are going to be revisiting the topic of probability. And I've got a couple of new activities to share with you guys today, uh, which are minimum prep and will help you guys engage your students in learning this topic. Now this first activity is one that I have called Wall of Odds, and it is something that I have adapted from Peter Lillardale's book, Building Thinking Classrooms. As a side note, if you haven't already read this book, it absolutely should be on your to-be-read list. It is a fantastic book and has absolutely changed the way that I'm teaching this year. So for this activity, you'll need a couple of different things to set up. The first and most important thing that you'll need is vertical non-permanent whiteboard surfaces in your classroom. I have put whiteboards up on all of the walls in my classroom, um, but there's a lot of different options for you to be able to utilise this vertical, you know, idea where the kids have to stand up in their groups. Uh, you could laminate A3 pieces of paper, blue tack them to the wall. Officeworks has got the whiteboard sticky for about $5 a roll. Um, there's a bunch of different mini whiteboards that you can stick up on the wall that you can get online as well. So lots of different options to create that vertical surface that your kids need for activities such as this. The next most important thing you will need is to split your students into randomised groups of three. Now groups of three is really important and if you do read the book you will understand why I'm not going to go into the depths of why three is important but trust me in this activity three is the golden number. And the groups do have to be visibly randomised. So I've been getting a deck of cards, um, making sure I've got three of each card in there um, and having the kids choose a card and then find their, their group that have the same number. You could use a digital one online to have it randomise the groups for the kids, whatever works in your classroom, but it does have to be visibly randomised. So once you've got your vertical surfaces and your kids in groups of three, this is where your problems come in. So you need open middle style problems seem to work the best here to give the kids a chance to have multiple different ways to get to their answer, but still end up with the same answer in the end. And so I found with my classes, those open middle style work the best. So as you can see here, students are given a problem to solve in their banner at the top of their vertical non-permanent surface and they must work as a team to solve it. Once solved, they can move on to a different problem by looking at other banners around the room. During this working time, I'll be moving around the room, gauging understanding, answering questions, and boxing work that I want them to keep. Now, the first couple of times that I tried to run this activity was an absolute disaster in my classroom. But the more that I ran it, the more engagement that I got out of my kids. And now they know exactly what to do. They don't need me to go over all the rules every time. And they're actually really, really engaging with it, which is fantastic. So some of the key takeaways that I got from the first couple of times that I ran this activity, which I thought I'd share with you guys so that you can skip over those uh, teething issues that I had, is always carry a different coloured marker than the ones that you've given to the kids. Um, that way you can box work on their whiteboards and once something has a box around it, you just say, hey guys, that needs to stay so that we can come back to it in our gallery walk at the end of this activity. Uh, the next thing you'd want to do is whenever you approach a group, take the marker from whoever's writing, have your conversation with them, and when you hand it back, hand it back to a different person. And that starts to create this movement of the marker around the group. So then it's not just one person holding onto it and doing all the work. It is moving around the room. And the last thing that I found was a really important rule to put in place was if you are speaking, you are not writing. So it can't just be one person writing down all of their amazing thoughts they've got to articulate them and justify them to the rest of their group and have someone else write them down so that it really is getting that teamwork working together. Now, this activity is absolutely fantastic. It works great for probability. It also works great for a whole range of other topics as well. And the more that I have used this activity in my classroom, the more my students' confidence uh, explaining their work to a group of people has grown, the more their enthusiasm and their ability to work as a group with a whole range of different people, not just their friends, has grown as well. And it's been an absolutely fantastic 
uh, activity to put in place and has created a cornerstone of engagement in my classroom. Now, this second activity sees students up, moving around the room, attempting to find their complementary event. So it is testing their knowledge of complementary events adding to one, as well as their knowledge from previous topics of adding fractions, decimals and percentages. Students are given the following cards and directed to find their complement. For a lower ability class, you could separate the fractions, decimals and percentages so that they're only finding matching fractions with fractions or decimals with decimals, percentages with percentages. Alternatively, for a higher level class, I have made it so that all of the cards are interchangeable and you would be able to match the fractions with the decimals or the percentages. So they are all interchangeable as well. Now, I would use this task as a maybe 10 to 15 minute closer activity at the end of a lesson on complementary events or at the start of a lesson after I'd taught complementary events as a bit of a revision just to say, OK, how much do we remember? There are a couple of different levels so that you can change it to suit the needs of your class. And of course, the resource will be attached to this video for your use as well. Well, there you have it, guys two different activities to help engage your students in learning probability. If you've liked this video and you'd like to see more, please make sure that you like and subscribe to the ACER Teacher YouTube channel. To stay up to date with all of my latest videos, um, drop a comment down below. If there's anything that you guys would like to see me create, I'd be more than happy to do so. So please make sure that you drop a comment down the bottom of this video. We'll see you guys next time.